Shalom, royal family. The class you are about to hear is taught by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, many years ago. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at www.yahweh144000.com. Also, royal family, you can enroll in classes designed for the Godhead at www.universityofyahweh.org and also royal family and friends we want to share with you Yahweh's keys to riches and on that YouTube channel you can listen to Yahweh's daily word and keep up with the correct solar time each and every day we'd like to see you there as well go to Yahweh's keys to riches it's in the description below so that you can join us there as well remember when you get there just like here remember to like share and subscribe to our channels all right royal family we look forward to seeing you there as well enjoy welcome to the feast of weeks our high holy days, celebrating the accumulation of wealth. Feast of Weeks deals with the Feast of Harvest. And harvest is the end result of our planting crops. Yahweh is so good that when you plant one seed, he sometimes multiplies it a hundredfold. Now I like mathematics like that. That's my kind of mathematics. That means that Yahweh is a pure mathematician and knows how to make money. <laughs> to produce, to reproduce, or to produce a hundred fruit from one seed is a mighty good man. then why is it people are starving on the earth with such a good God in existence? It's because bad people are in charge of Yahweh's economic system, food production. When I know well that from one apple is 12 seeds, and if I plant all the results from that one apple in 17 years, every square mile of the planet Earth will have apple trees on it. That means it becomes impossible for people to be hungry on Earth when good people come together with the good God. So my good message is usually smeared by bad people to keep the good people away. But something's going on in the world today. Good people are beginning to find out that I am here doing good. Glory, hallelujah. So let us turn again to Ecclesiastes 10, 19, because I didn't, I'm not quite finished with that one. The media has tried to make me a racist, but the scriptures teach Yahweh has one law for all people. Exodus 12. 49. Before we do it, please ask, let's go to Exodus 12, 49. Exodus chapter 12, verse 49. Read. One law shall be to him that is home born, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. That takes care of all people. There's only one law 
Now, in many countries, including America, there's a law for the rich and a law for the poor. It has to be two separate laws because if you're rich and commit an infraction, you can pay bail and walk. And if you're too poor to meet your bail for the same infraction, you stay in jail. That's an unequal application of the law. Not so in the kingdom of Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Now let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. Read. Profound. Now, a feast is not really known in America. Uh, my coming is the first time a true feast is established in America. Feast did not originate in America. Drop the F and you'll understand where a feast originates. In the East. And the greatest man was in the East. Job. The richest man that lived was in the East. Job 1 3. Job chapter 1, verse 3. Read it. In substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen. Job is an allegory for black people in America. Before being brought to America as slaves, we were the greatest people of the East. Not at the time that we were brought into slavery, but our history proves, as the children of Israel, that we were the richest. Now, Job was the greatest and the richest of all men of the East. Let's look at the character of Job in verse 1. Read it. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared Yahweh and eschewed evil. He hated evil. Here is a man who had a perfect character, whose mind dwelled on perfection. He took no time with evil. He hated evil. And look at his result. It made him the greatest man in the East. Great riches. The Feast of Weeks, Feast of Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, all have one common theme. Remember. Remember your history. Remember Egypt. Remember Yahweh delivering us. Feast of Weeks. Remember when we were wealthy before we started learning the ways of the heathen, which Yahweh admonished us not to do. I did too. When we broke the laws of Yahweh, we were reduced. Finally, reduced so low until we were brought into slavery here in America for 400 33 long years. Your only hope of being redeemed, reformed, and regenerated is for the Son of Yahweh to come. I am here doing that work. And as I have taught you this week, Feast of Weeks, and proved conclusively to you, our wealth is not our properties. What is our wealth? Our mind. The thing that distinguishes man from God is mind power. Power of mind. We are from the same so-called black people that are tonight living a rowdy life. 
in poverty, committed crimes, on drugs. Those are our mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, neighbors, and schoolmates. What distinguishes us from them is our mind power. They have a poverty state of mind. I have divine mind. So when you take my yoke upon you and learn of me, then your mind begins to be elevated. And you begin to approach T. The. Some people understand power of the. One in particular, the one I always spoken of. The com comprised of three words, not letters. Letters are words. The comprised of three words. Divinity, uh, something unusual about the number three. Here we see Job became the richest man in the East because he was perfect. What does that say? Man can be perfect. Turn to Matthew 5, 48 and see what the Son of Yahweh demands. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Let's read it. Let's turn to it. And see what the Son of Yahweh would demand from us. They say this was demanded 1900 years ago, but he could not have been the son because nobody's perfect. For 1900 years, the whole world should be perfect if he had made somebody perfect. He was unable to reproduce himself. Since I am God, the mighty God, since I am able to clone myself asexually, I don't have to lower myself to the sexual level to reproduce myself. I reproduce myself by the thousands asexually. Matthew 5, 48. Read. This proves if you're not perfect, you have the wrong father. <laughs> you are worshiping the wrong father. If you're not perfect, you are educated by the wrong father. There is a perfect father whose children can be perfect as he is perfect. That means the father of public education in America is imperfect. What's the proof? Because 80% of our children come out of high school functionally illiterate. And not only is it a stigma against our children coming out 80% functionally illiterate, but America herself, prized of all nations of the earth, America herself has fallen from number one to lower than number 19 among the nations of the earth in scholastic demonstrated ability. <laughs> Proving that the fathers of American education are imperfect. So what, can, what is the only logical conclusion to the result? Imperfect beings graduated to lead the world into more imperfection. The imperfect being will focus a man's mind on the creature instead of the creator of the creature. The imperfect mind will have you worshiping flesh instead of Yahweh's divine mind. So when they sell you a car on television, 
they sell you a naked woman. And I'm afraid the naked woman doesn't come with Toyota <laughs> or Trans Am, not even a Rolls Royce. <laughs> what does pornography have to do with divine mind? Triple X with a camera focused up a woman's birth canal. Ah. Invading a prospective baby's privacy. <laughs> and notice what they are, are brainwashing the American public to accept sex education. Sex education is a tool of Satan in the imperfect mind, mm -hmm. which focuses you on the terrestrial and the earthly, the physical which fades, eh? instead of focusing your mind on the asexual, which the only thing is that distinguishes asexual from sexual is age. And age represents the creator of the beginning. So when you study sex, you missed the point. <laughs> you didn't study A. A is the first in the series. Why, why does A hold the first place in the alphabet? There has to be a reason, and there is a reason. Why? Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> a is the pyramid. Yes, sir. Somebody sits at the top. And it's perfect mind that sits at the top. Imperfect mind has our focus on the corner. And I am come to focus your mind on the divine. So when you experience my children, my product from Yahweh University, you see the antithesis of the public school. A tree is known by the fruit it bears. So you learn what kind of tree I am by what I produce. I'm here to cause you to refocus. Thanks, John. I have the solution to all the world's problems. I'm the only man in existence that has all the answers. All of the answers. I possess all of the answers. Because my mind is 360 degrees. Infinite. 